Hey guys, it's Wade here again. Before I get into the final installation of the engine, I wanted to cover the installation and the configuration of the Silver Hawk fuel injection system. I originally had planned on placing the fuel servo. It's going to place it facing 180 degrees what it is now, basically in this area where the ski tubing is. I had planned on having the Ram air can where it is now since it's about the only spot it will fit between the firewall. It does come down just a hair, which is why I have this this uh, little piece on the back end of the Ram air scoop that comes in and it extends back and it specifically takes into account the curvature up of the lower cowling. And so uh, this actually, this little half moon part right here of the Ram air can actually sticks down into the extension down that swoops back that I created on the bottom of the cowling. Okay, so this is this was the constant if you will and then I was only planning on having maybe four to six inches of skeet tubing and then the fuel injection servo facing forward underneath the cold air induction plenum the problem is, is that with cold air induction, it extends vertically down quite a bit more than your standard configuration with just the hole on the bottom of the oil pan on a regular light combing that you connect up either your fuel injection servo or a carburetor. So with the cold air pipes coming out, obviously they come down a little bit more vertically. And then there's the cold air plenum right in here. And normally on a tractor aircraft facing forward, this wouldn't be that big of an issue. A lot of the RV guys run these. And then you simply have this uh, sticking out of the front of the cold air plenum, cold air induction intake. And then you just take this Ram air can with this big plate here and you slap it on the front here. And you put a uh, bell mouth intake a few inches behind the prop and everything is golden and and off you go you're off to the races well and especially mike melville's carbon fiber cowlings those are specifically extremely tight cowlings so putting not only just the cold air induction in there but then trying to hang a a fuel injection servo underneath of that it just wasn't going to work unless i did massive massive rework on the bottom of the cowling which i didn't want to do so I did a lot of courses of action, different concepts, if you will. I tried every which way to take this fuel injection servo and face it forward, but it just wasn't going to happen. The two main reasons it wasn't going to happen is anything with a horizontal induction system like a, a cold air plenum, you have to make sure that you're draining anything out of the bottom of that plenum when the aircraft is at rest. So that's this blue sniffle valve right here and so there's a little ball in there that falls down and allows anything as far as fuel if it rains water to drain out this hose right here and then as soon as you start the aircraft the suction of the induction system takes that little ball sucks it up closes it off and everything is good so the valve is closed until you stop the aircraft and then that little ball falls and then again especially with us in the grazing position. It just drains all any extra fuel that may accumulate into, you know, you don't want any backfires. It helps prevent that or kickbacks, you know, when you're starting the aircraft. My third option was actually facing this fuel injection servo aft, and mainly that was because of center of gravity. I was trying to get everything weight-wise. This is probably a good six pounds. I was trying to get it as far forward as I could. But the bottom line was it had to face aft. And then that meant that somehow or another, I had to get the air turned around coming in from the Ram air can into the front of this, which again, if it's obviously if it's 180 degrees out, we're just going from here to here. Another issue was I had two, I had a 90 degree and an 85 degree elbow that was aluminum from Airflow Performance, which was strong enough to hold this thing up. At the time, I was dealing with the fact that, okay, I need to create a 180 degree air turnaround. Well, I tried a, a number of different machinations and I had to make this a little bit tighter than I wanted to as far as this diameter. Uh, two inches is what the Airflow Performance guys have. I think I have about 1.85, so I cheated a little bit there. Um, I have the same inside diameter, the same airflow, but um, I had to go 
from here, I had to go at a slight angle up to get the whole entire unit up uh, to get it off of the bottom of the cowling. And it's about 280 thousandths off the bottom of the cowling, just a hair over a quarter of an inch. I obviously would want more, but that's what I have right now, and I'll take a look at it. I do have a carbon fiber cowling, so that's fairly rigid. And in this bottom area right in this area right here where there would be any type of contact with cowling underneath that carbon fiber i do have a layer of kevlar so if it's going to be between this 180 degree air induction tube or the cowling i think this is going to win out with that kevlar in there so i machined this plate right here a two and a half inch connection with this two and a half inch skeet tubing i also ordered a two and a half inch i think it's 39 thousandths wall thickness for this guy right here this little piece of aluminum that this attaches to uh, i was trying to get a, a better flow on the angle but i my calculations were just a little bit off i planned for five degrees I had to keep this high to keep it off the cowling, but then I had to dip down a little bit to face towards this opening here of the Ram Air Can. I went with five degrees. I probably should have gone with max three degrees, maybe about two, two and a half. Uh, that would have been a little bit better flow. This facing forward, if I didn't mention it before, the two restricting factors was this uh, sniffle valve right there. And then... On the top here, this is the, it's a, a dash four quarter inch outlet where the fuel comes in through the main line here, which is another issue altogether because this comes all the way over from the right front side of the uh, engine from the mechanical fuel pump and then it has to come in the left side. If I tried to take it in the other side, there was interference with the throttle lever. So I would have had to get a completely different type of throttle lever for the servo. So. I had to bring this in over on this side. I had already switched the whole entire thing to to take because you can move this inlet from one side to the other. Uh, I had already switched it over to the right side, then I had to switch it back. Okay, same thing here. This dash four on the Silverhawk, this quarter inch outlet that goes up to the fuel spider can either be right there, right in front of where the yellow pointer is on the bottom of this bottom, or it can be on the top. So you can configure this thing you can mount it any way you want to but it's a matter of how it will fit and so with this outlet either being on top or on the bottom and then this sniffle valve it just was not going to physically fit over in this area so i really had no option i was driven to mount this fuel injection servo facing completely aft and then that drove the requirements and it drove the configuration and the design of this 180 degree air induction tube so there's that now one of the reasons why i wanted to do the video at this time is i'm going to be taking this all of this out because i'm going to take the engine off i'm going to take the ram can off of the firewall now i do have the if you look right here and i'll show you a little bit better look at that and here in just a minute i do have the butterfly valve lever attached to the end of the rod i had to modify it that's on my blog but this there's about about a 1.1 inch slot on the aft side of the firewall on this side of the firewall it's almost a two inch slot on the inside kind of a v-shape and i have an electronic actuator inside of the hell hole that's mounted vertically that opens and closes the valve now i i'll probably describe this again but i'm going to tell you right now there's two operating functions of how the the air is drawn into the system one is through the ram air scoop which is on the center line of the aircraft and that just takes a velocity of air, turns it into pressure, brings it through the center with no filter, through the center of a conical shaped, which is around the perimeter of this ram air can, right down the center of a k and filter, and just draws ram air all the way into the fuel injection servo. It gets you anywhere approximately an inch, inch plus of manifold pressure. That's uh, obviously at altitude. If you're down on doing ground ops or you're down a little bit lower, you can close the butterfly valve, which is at the front here, and then that uh, drives the suction that this is drawn in. There's four of these round, rather large, three and a half, four inches, plastic intakes there, and they're like reed valves, and so they open up 
and the air flows in. Now when it's coming in through the ram air scoop, it just blows those out and pressurizes them and it keeps the air from flowing out. But uh, when, that ram when that butterfly valve is closed, then the air is drawn in here, which again, there's a filter around the perimeter. And so it draws the air in through the filter and you get filtered air. So you have two different types of operation. And I'm gonna take this apart, like I said, because I'm going to, I need to, to get the engine off to do some stuff on the accessory case. And then I need to also put the sheeting on and uh, you know dress up this firewall to make it look like a real firewall. So I did want to quickly address the location of my fuel spider, which is in what would be considered a more standard location on the top of the engine. So obviously this is the fuel spider, and then we have the dash four hose. It goes down between the cylinders that connects to the fuel servo on the bottom side of the engine. Now on one of my video updates I did a couple months ago, I got a comment from Dave Adams, who I want to specifically note that I respect highly. He pointed out that in the airflow performance manual, that Don points out that the fuel flow divider, should, aka spider, should be mounted on the cool side of the engine. And I can understand why. Now I, I had conversations with Bully about this quite a bit. He ran for many, many years the spider, the flow divider. He, he mounted it on the top side of the engine and he didn't have any issues. And the, the main issue obviously being not during flight itself, but it would be with a hot start after the engine's only been sitting for a little bit and then trying to get the thing started and then the, the whole issue with vapor lock and all that. Now, the reason why right now I'm going with the fuel flow divider on the top of the engine is really twofold. One is that it's already up there and it's mounted and I don't want to mess around with trying to bring it down below. That being said, I will if need be or if I find an issue with a hot start. Uh, there's data for both sides and as you can see here, I've actually done a 3D printed mock-up of the spider the or divider block and then actually I've done many, many versions of a mount to put it down here below. Now, the second reason is I want to know if there is an issue with putting this thing on the top of the engine in a pusher aircraft. I understand, you know, that's the hot side of the engine, but I, there's things like that that for me personally, uh, I, I hear both sides of the argument or the discussion, and I personally want to know because, again, talking to Bully and a couple others that never uh, put it on the lower side of the engine and never had any issues that, that over the many many years that they flew their aircraft so I, I personally like to know those things and again later on i'll be perfectly willing to take the fuel spider put it on the bottom side of the engine and uh, go through that effort and i'm even leaning forward a little bit i've got the 3d model for the bracket i pretty much know where i'm going to put it and i've actually routed out and measured out the lines that i would need and how i would pretty much route those if need be if i do go with that in the future but for right now starting out after first flight and I'll assess it and then see how that's going to go and and then I at least I can report back whatever my findings are to whomever's interested <laughs> Okay, here we are on the other side. I just wanted to show you this quickly. Obviously, it doesn't look that much different from the left side. I will point out, since I failed to point out earlier, that initially when I put the fuel injection servo facing aft, I did try to put that 90 and 85 degree aluminum elbows in right here to see how those would work. But the problem was, is I just had zero clearance with the cowling. I, I would have had to grind off almost all of the square flange of the bottom elbow, and it just wasn't going to work. So that's why I ended up being driven to create and model this thing up and actually construct it. So over here, this is obviously the throttle side of the fuel injection servo. The only other difference... Or one thing that I wanted to point out on this side is you get a better shot of the sniffle valve right there. Now I will point something out as far as the clearance between the sniffle valve and the skeet tubing right here. I, I do have to tighten this up a little bit, but there was a little bit more clearance because when I initially started out, this skeet tubing came off of here. This is angled down just a hair, as is this right here. I talked about that five degrees. And what that did is it actually made a little bit of a dip with the skeet tubing. There was one issue with that though. 
there was a couple of wrinkles right in here that was actually kind of dipping down just a little bit into the airflow that I wanted to get rid of. And the way I did get rid of that was I just mounted the skeet tubing a little bit farther forward than I had originally planned. As you can see, you can see a fair amount of aluminum of that little two and a half, 39 thousandths inch tube right there. Uh, originally, the skeet tube covered all that up. So the skeet tube is towards the front of that tube right there, and that gets rid of those couple little wrinkles up on the top however that straightens the skeet tube out and so the dip in the middle now I'm not I don't have as much clearance with that sniffle valve I will be watching that now I do have another option it's not as sexy but I I created my own sniffle valve right here originally I got this from one of the RV Bubba's and what this does is it attaches to a 45 degree street elbow and this will be closer up to the bottom of the plenum if need be. I'm going to take this off, the skeet tube off, and I'll show you as I basically disassemble this. I'll go through and then I'll show you that butterfly valve as well. I'm disassembling this Ram air can because I need to take it off the firewall. I wanted to take this opportunity as I've taken this back ring off, which as a point of note is what keeps this centered pressed up against the inner ring that goes right around the valve. You can see I have a screwdriver set in here right now. I wanted to show you the inner workings of this, not only to show you the valve opening, which I'll do right now. And then closing. But when that valve goes into that closed position right there, you can see there's these plastic reed valves and there's four big circles almost about three inches around I can't really get this valve or this filter out easily since I've knocked this down but you can kind of see up here and I'll try to position the light so that you can see there you go you can see those circular openings there's four of them around the perimeter of the can and so what happens is, is when that valve shuts off and the fuel injection servo is pulling air in as far as through the induction system it simply opens these reed valves up here well all the way around and then of course uh, obviously that pulls in the air through the filter and then it comes down the center into the carbon fiber air induction tube that I just showed you that then does the U-turn into the fuel injection servo. So that's the initial disassembly of this can. I wanted to show you this is a can and filter, a somewhat conical filter. I wanted to show you the filter. I wanted to show you these reed valves from the inside and I'm going to take this off and just have the front piece and I'll cycle that butterfly valve again and then you'll get even a better view of that. Okay last segment here folks. I'll know that I'm going to be using the switch that is going to be on the panel wired directly of course to it. I didn't want to put all the bolts back in it's a pain in the butt so I'm going to hold this while I throw the switch up to open and then down to close this so there you have it from this side i'll show you very quickly from the inside and we will call it good on this video okay obviously we're in the hell hole here and you'll see the butterfly valve open up this time you'll get to see the actuator closed for the actuator is open on the valve and then open on the actuator is closed on the valve And again, this thing's a little bit loosey-goosey with me just holding it, but I didn't want to take the time being lazy to put all those bolts in. So that's it. Hey, thanks for watching. Take care. Cheers.